Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to Seven Ages of Steam. I know it's been a really long time since I've touched this series, but finally I've gotten round to it and finally it's time for the day with 1920s locomotives. And I would say the 1920s was a very important decade for steam, um, you know, obviously because we started to see some real refinements and innovations with the steam locomotives, and also because, you know, we started to see Pacifics, we started to see really, really quite big, powerful locomotives, and the locomotives introduced around this time were really capable of pulling some really, really big consists, which is really impressive. Uh, but sadly, there's only time really in this video to show you six, so I have chosen six. Some of them are big, powerful locomotives, some of them not so much, but I'm hoping I've got quite a nice variety to show you today. So, without any further ado, I'm going to get on then with the first locomotive of the day. This one's from the early part of the decade, but uh, yeah, let's go and show it to you. And we're starting off in 1922, and this is a very, very famous class of locomotive. Uh, this is actually an A3, uh, the Flying Scotsman, as you can see, running number 4472, of course. But really, this class would have started life as an A1, as I'm sure many of you will know. And she's got some coaches behind her, but they are split over two sidings. They're the teak coaches, of course. Uh, so actually, I'm going to need some help from this little Jinty, little BR Black Jinty, as you can see there. And she's just going to, well, same drill as always, really. She's going to take those coaches out of her siding and just drop them off outside on the main line. And then the Flying Scotsman, hopefully, Hopefully we'll reverse her three coaches out to join with the others to make six in total. So I think we'll get on with that to start with then. I have got some more info to tell you about the A3s and the Flying Scotsman of course, but first let's try this little operation shall we. So I'll just grab those points. And here we go then with the bonus locomotive of the day. Uh, this is the Jinty, so hopefully she'll get these out without too much of a problem. Here we go. The coaches are just clipping each other there, but... Oof. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> there we go. And pardon my lack of breathtaking realism here while I just steal that loco off the line. So now those coaches are free rolling and all we've got to do is uh, get the Flying Scotsman to meet them. So let's go and change those points again and get her out. Okay, and let's give her a little bit of juice then and see if she won't come out. So I'm going to do this steadily because I know my teaks and I know that they like to derail on certain points. As you can see. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let me just fix that and we'll see if we can't get them going again. One minute. Okay, I think I've managed to get them back on but I'm not 100% convinced. So I'm just going to give her a little bit more juice and see what happens. Oh, actually, no, that's alright. That's not bad. Let me just swap those points then and I'll get her going forwards and then I'll tell you a little bit about the class. Okay, that's done. Let's bring her forwards again then. Here we go. Hopefully she'll pull them. There we go. Perfect. Alright, here's that info I promised you then. So as I said then, the class was known as the A1 when they were introduced in 1922 to the design of Sir Nigel Gresley and they were the first class of British Pacifics, excluding the Great Western Pacific of course, uh, which was just a single locomotive. During the course of their lifetimes they were reclassified as A3s, as you'd expect, after their boilers, valve gear and cylinders were replaced for more capable ones. In 1935, number 2750, Papyrus, broke the world record for the fastest unstreamlined locomotive at 108 miles per hour, and of course it still holds that record actually. In total, 79 locomotives were produced over 13 years, and this one was built in 1923, and it is in fact the only remaining member of the class. Okay, as usual then, I'm just going to bring her to a stop. I think there will be fine. There's a little close-up of her before we move on, and as always, I'll get her running again very shortly, but first there's two more locos to show to you, so I'm going to get to those straight away, and uh, here's the next one. So now we're moving on to the Great Western Railway with a locomotive that was introduced the following year in 1923. This is of course the Castle Class, and this is a Wren Castle Class, this one's Cardiff Castle. I decided not to run the blue one today, I just thought it would be nice to have a change and run the traditional Great Western Green one. So this one's number 4075, gorgeous 460 locomotive, of course uh, Charles Collett there, 
uh, famously designed this one. And uh, yeah, uh, she's got a big rig of uh, Great Western coaches. Not quite all of them, I couldn't fit any more in the siding. I've got one more, um, but again, I couldn't fit it in the siding. So she has got, how many is that? That's six, isn't it? So hopefully she'll look nice pulling those. I'm just going to grab those points. And I do want her onto the middle line, but I suppose we'll take one thing at a time. So she's just got to get across those points for now, get her onto the main line. And then I will swap her over another set of points onto the middle line where I want her to run for the rest of the day. So, yep, yeah, I'll go to the controls then and give her a little bit of juice and uh, fingers crossed, see what happens. A beautiful smooth performance there from the mighty Wren Castle class. Right, I'm going to have to go and change those points then. So, uh, yep, yeah, wish me luck. Let's get her onto that middle line. Here we go then. Let's see how she takes these points. I don't remember ever having a problem with the Castle class on points, so hopefully we'll be okay. I suppose it's the coaches we've got to worry about, if anything, but yep, yeah, so far so good. Yep. Yeah. Oh, slowing down a bit, a bit more juice, hang on. Okay, here's a little bit of info then about the class. So 1923 then, the Castle class was also known as the 4073 class and was designed by Charles Collett as I just said a minute ago. And they were basically a larger version of the earlier Star class but with a new and larger boiler. In 1923 when they were introduced, they were actually the most powerful locomotives in the country even though they were nowhere near the biggest. They famously hauled trains such as the Cornish Riviera and the Cheltenham Flyer and in total 171 were produced over about 25 years and Cardiff Castle was built in January 1924 and was quite sadly scrapped in 1961 during November. But luckily eight do still remain in preservation. Okay, I'll bring the beautiful castle class to a stop there, there we go. There's a little close-up of her there, just in case anybody wanted to see one. And of course, she's going to be running again in a second, uh, alongside the Flying Scotsman. But first of all, I've got one more loco to show you before I do that. So let's head over there now, and I will show it to you. And this is a loco that I really don't show very often for some reason. Uh, it's from 1924, and it's a 5600 class, or a 56 X. But I do call it Chris, that's the name of its previous owner. And I didn't know him or anything like that, I just got chatting to him on eBay. And uh, so, yeah, it got called Chris. This was many years ago, actually, uh, two or three years ago, I would say now. And, uh, yep, yeah, a beautiful, ooh, what is it? It's an 06, I would say an 062, looking at it from where I am. And she's got some box cars. not all of them Great Western, I'm afraid, most of them are Southern, unfortunately. But she has got a nice Great Western guards van, not that you'll see it at the moment. But, uh, yeah, that should be a nice little train for her. And uh, she's not a great runner on the points and that sort of thing, so we'll have to see what happens. But I'll just grab them now. There we go, that should get her live. So I'm going to go over to the controls then and see if I can't get her started. And if we do get her out of those points just fine, I'll give you a little bit of info about her while she runs. So, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'm just going to keep her nice and slow there just to minimise the chance of her derailing because she's not all that happy on some of those second radius curves that are on her line. But yeah, the class were introduced in 1924 to the Great Western Railway by Charles Collett in order to replace some of the non-standard Welsh locomotives that were in the fleet. Around 200 of them were built over about four years and they did work on the Welsh Valley lines as well. The class were withdrawn during the first half of the 1960s and a total of nine still remain in preservation, which is pretty nice. But yeah, nice model, don't run it very often for whatever reason, but yeah, nice Backman model. Um, not a bad runner, a little bit on the noisy side, but I really don't mind that. So enjoy her for a second longer and then I'll get the other two engines up and running as well. Alright then, let's get those other two engines up and running then and have a halfway running session. So here goes the Castle class. Beauty. 
I do hope you're enjoying it so far, by the way. Let me know if you are. Um, I am, personally, <laughs> but that's just because I like these engines. Flying Scotsman then, let's get her up and running as well. Wouldn't be the same without her. Okay, nice express speed, I think, for her. Okay, let's have that running session then. Now I do love that Flying Scotsman model, don't get me wrong, but I might be right in saying that the Castle class is just stealing the show a little bit. I mean, just look at that. Amazing. Really, really beautiful model. But, you know, the Flying Scotsman, I think if anyone's going to give her a run for their money, it'll be the Flying Scotsman. There she goes, and there's the castle just running along behind her there. And there's the castle bringing up the rear. I think those coaches do it as well, don't they? Just gorgeous coaches. This is one of the older Hornby Flying Scotsmans, loco driven, and uh, you don't get much more reliable than that. And uh, she's one of the ones we reckon will still be running in another 50 years time. <laughs> and all the other modern locos have long gone, but we'll see what happens. I'll try and take care of them all, so yeah, what will happen will happen, I suppose. And here's Chris. Again, I don't run her very often, but she does still get serviced regularly, so when I do want her, she's ready to run. And I think, actually, she looks pretty good. Can't complain. Do you want a quick ride on her? I bet you do. Go on, then. Here we go. Alright then, I think I'll stop these guys now then and put them back into their sidings off camera as always just because it does take quite a long time. And when I come back I'll be ready to show you the next three locos of the day, which is the final three of course, but uh, yep, yeah, not to worry, uh, lots more still to come. And next up, quite a jump now to 1926, this is the Hughes Crab, as designed by uh, Mr George Hughes of course. It's a beautiful 2.6R, I believe you call it a mogul locomotive. And uh, this is the weathered version by Backman, number 42942. Uh, a real, real beautiful model, really. And she's going to be pulling some of the larger form factor Hornby wagons, or vans, I should say. Uh, lots of those, a lot of McVitties, a couple of Kellogg's, Heinz, Cadbury's, etc. Uh, so hopefully that should look quite nice. And uh, also there's the LMS brake van on the back, which should also look pretty cool. So I'm just going to grab those points and I'll get her out onto the line. Now, I want her to get onto the middle line, actually, so she's got quite a long way to go, so I'm gonna change these points as well so that she goes onto the middle line, and then I suppose we'll deal with the uh, crossing onto the third line a little bit later on, so. Let me get her going then. Here we go, the huge cramp. Not the gentlest of starts there, sorry about that. There we go, all those wagons behaving themselves. And the loco's just reaching those second set of points, so I'll just slow her down a touch, nice and steady, because I don't like that front truck wheel, but I'm just trying to see if it's still on. I think it is. And the wagons seem to be behaving themselves, touch wood. 
a bit more speed now. Yeah, okay, just shut those then. And let's get her around onto the third line then, if I can. So she's gonna be coming down there and hopefully across these points here. So I'm just gonna change those ready for her. One and two, and then she's exactly where we want her to be. So here she comes now, nice and steady then, slow her down a bit. Yep, yeah, very nice. Let's just hope the wagons follow suit, seem to be. Very nice. So here's some information about the Hughes Crab anyway. So it was a 260 mixed traffic locomotive built between 1926 and 1932. And as I've already said, I think to the design of George Hughes. There were 245 of them produced to run on the LMS and they earned themselves the nickname Crabs, supposedly for a couple of reasons. First, the positioning of the outside cylinders, uh, which look a little bit like a crab's pincers. And secondly, the scuttling sensation that was apparently felt on the footplate by the crew uh, when under load. So, uh, yes, yeah, a little bit strange, but apparently that's what they felt. They were fairly successful though, the entire class survived until 1961. After that, all but three were scrapped and those three entered preservation. This example was built in December 1932 and sadly again was scrapped in October 1967, but that is really quite late for a steam locomotive to be scrapped, so it did survive quite a long time. Anyway, enjoy her for a second longer and then I'll introduce you to loco number five of the day. Okay, we'll let the crab have a little rest there then. I'll try and do a nice gentle stop. There we go. And as always, she'll be running again in just a second, but I've got a couple more to show you, so here's the next one. So this one is a very special locomotive, and I've never shown it on the channel before because I've only just got it. I got it for a ridiculous price at a model train fair. Uh, 30 quid this only cost me, so I was really, really pleased with that. And it was built in the 1920s, so I thought, you know, I will include this one on the running day. And it is, of course, the Backman Lord Nelson class, um, which is a 460. It's a little bit like the N15 and the S15 and, you know, what else. But uh, yes, it is a separate class, would you believe? So, yep, there it is anyway. Uh, you can't see it all that well, but I will show you her a little bit better in a moment. But she's also got a rake of four Pullman coaches, which looks very, very nice with her, I think. And I'll just grab the points there. There we go. And I'll give her some juice and get her out of that siding for you. And it's such a beautiful, elegant locomotive, this one is. It's absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, I need her on the middle line, so I'm gonna just go and swap some points now to get her there. So, yep, let's try that. And these really are the dreaded points. These bring down the best of locomotives. So, she is going nice and slow, but I bet it won't help, no, <laughs> told you. Right, it's this front bogey, actually. Let's cause that. It didn't happen on the way out of the siding though, so never mind. Are we there? No, I've gone and knocked the tender off as well, I think. Oh god. Slight technical blip here, just uh, try and forget you've seen this if you can. Right, here we go. Let's see if we can get her going again. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Right. Here we go then, I'm just going to switch those again and send her off, no, forwards preferably. Alright, here we are then, here's a little running session with the Lord Nelson class and of course some info about her too. So the Lord Nelsons were designed by Richard Maunsell and introduced to the Southern Railway in 1926. They were actually intended for continental boat trains, whatever that means, I need to learn about that. But the class also hauled express passenger services, which is a little bit more like it, on the western region, I believe, of the Southern Railway. Only 16 were constructed, quite interestingly, and this one was built in 1928, but sadly scrapped again in December 1961. Otherwise, all but one of the class was scrapped. But luckily that one that wasn't is still in preservation, and it can still be seen today.
All right, let's let this fabulous model have a quick break then. Uh, stop it there, yeah, that's fine. And there's a little close-up, look at that. What a gorgeous, gorgeous model. I'm, you know, I was just, I, it was a bit embarrassing really when I bought it because I was so excited by it. But yeah, gorgeous model, <laughs> let's move on um, before I sort of lose my head. And uh, look at the last loco of the day. And I hope it's not too much of an anticlimax, but uh, yeah, here it is. So there it is then, loco number six. And this is the most modern we're going to be looking at today from 1928. And this is my Triang, well, I think it is Hornby, but it's sort of the Triang style. Um, 2P uh, with the XO4 motor in it, so it is loco driven and uh, it is a fantastic loco. And I'm going to try and prove that today because she's got a lot of coaches. Uh, that's five coaches, I believe, and three of them are Lima and they have the plastic wheels, so there's a lot of drag from those. And yet, this little 440 with the little shiny metal wheels is going to try and pull them. And uh, I think you'll be quite impressed by the pulling power of it, actually. So, uh, yeah, let's give it a try then. Uh, well, just before we do, I better let you know it's running number 690. And uh, it was designed by Henry Fowler, of course. But, uh, yeah, without any further ado then, let me just get these points open. Those two. And I think we should be good to go. So, yep, here's a little bit of juice then for the 2P and her five coaches. Yeah, not the smoothest of starts there, but she really is the most quiet and smooth runner once she gets going. I can't believe it, to be honest. But yeah, the 2P then, it was introduced in 1928 and designed by Sir Henry Fowler and intended for light passenger duties. So yeah, probably about five coaches is probably about right. The 2P was in fact based on a previous design though from the Midland Railway in the form of Samuel Johnson's 483 class. The class were produced between 1928 and 1932, during which time 138 were built. Withdrawal began in the early 1950s and by 1962 all had been removed from service to be scrapped and quite sadly none was saved either. Okay, that's it then, that's everything. Let's have a little running session then with all three. Let's start the crab up alongside the 2P. And uh, I'll just move the camera now and uh, head on up to the Lord Nelson class and uh, get her running as well, shall I? Okay, that's it then. You've seen all six locomotives, so I'll post a little poll so that you can tell me which one was your favourite. I suppose it all depends on the mood you're in at the time, but I think, for me, surprisingly, it's between the Castle class and the Lord Nelson. I know I've said in the past that the Flying Scotsman was my favourite, but uh, yeah, I think my tastes change a little bit, so yeah, you'll have to let me know. Just can't get over how smooth that 2 P's performing today. I kept her nice and slow because I thought, you know, she can go nice and slow, so why not? But yeah, she's a very, very, very fast locomotive as well, at full speed. But I don't think I'll do that because uh, I think the little double O gauge passengers would probably die. Yep, thoroughly enjoyed this one. Uh, everything has behaved itself, apart from that uh, Lord Nelson class when it came off on the points. But apart from that, I'm really, really impressed because some of the locos I've been running today have been a little bit iffy, um, you know, on the point work in the past. But today, not a single problem. Well, just one. So, yeah, very, very pleased, very proud of them all. <laughs> There's the crab, of course. Classic locomotive, really. Yeah, 
Utes, all of them. I did actually put some other locos out on the line from the 1920s. Well, two, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Bonus points for anybody who can uh, spot them and name them in the comments. Okay, well that should just about do it. That's six of the locomotives that were introduced during the 1920s. Of course, there is an awful lot more. There's the D49, which was a Gresley 440. The King Class, which was another Collet 460, a little bit like the Castle, really. You've got the Hall Class from the Great Western. The N15, also from the Southern Railway, which is a 460, very similar to the Lord Nelson Class. You've got the L1, also from the Southern Railway. Um, and I've got a few of those, little Triang 440s. And also, of course, the Royal Scot which is a very famous locomotive. So, yeah, all sorts came out in the 1920s. And as I say, quite an important year for steam, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, that's it from the video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, as always. If you did, please feel free to leave me a like or even a comment. And uh, if you'd like more, of course, you can always subscribe. And if you'd like to, you can also check out the Facebook or Twitter pages, and they're at facebook.com forward slash Sam's Trains or twitter.com forward slash Sam's Trains. It would be lovely to see you on there, but for now, once again, thank you very much for watching indeed. It's uh, very much appreciated, and I will see you very soon. Cheers, everybody.